So, hi Robert, great to see you here at the Arm Stand Defended World 2023. Now, Arm is obviously very well known as the supplier of IP for a large majority of the, the microcontrollers that go into automotive space. And that's an area that you personally have been um, exploring to see you know, what's the future of automotive going to look like. So, what are you seeing? So, what we're seeing now is the, the software-defined vehicle is being seen as the future of automotive. So no longer, your vehicle's gonna be defined by the software functions that are in it. Those software functions are going to be updatable, upgradable, you know, when you as a consumer of a vehicle have, have actually got it. So we're seeing that happening now, but it's really changing the way people need to do the development of vehicles. There's a lot more software's gonna be involved, and so you need to have a different way of actually doing software development and also software deployment to the sort of traditional ways of doing it. And so that's what we see as the future of, of automotive right now. Now just to explain, sort of today the way software for automotive is designed, it's, it's developed, in, uh, popped into a box, that box goes into the car and, and then we work on the next project, don't we? It's never updated, but uh, are there parallels in other industries and other market segments that we can look to to say how we can sort of make this updatable software possible? Yeah, and that, that's what we've really been looking at. So, um, so you're right, traditionally you'd kind of build this thing called an ECU, electronic control unit, and the software that would go with it would kind of go there, and if you needed to update it, you'd go to the dealership and they'd do some sort of update. But that's rare, isn't it? It's not like, we don't go for a feature update, we go because no, exactly. a problem's been found. No, absolutely. So, so what we're seeing now is the opportunity to really kind of treat the car a bit like you treat you know, your cell phone or your computer, which gets better over time. Every time I get a, a, you know, an update to my operating system on my phone, it's great, it's yeah. like I've got a new phone. The car should be the same. It shouldn't be that when the car leaves the dealership, it doesn't get better, it should get better. And so I think that's gonna really kind of change the way we, we, we kind of do our development and also continuously update. So there is a parallel in the, in the world of cloud development called cloud native. And so what that, what they do there is you have this continuous development and deployment in the cloud for a cloud instance. So you're writing code that's gonna run in the cloud. What we're looking at is whether you can use some of those methodologies, standards, tools, techniques to develop in the cloud, but then deploy to a vehicle. What that allows you to do is actually start your development early. So you don't have to have your ECU there. You're gonna do development in the cloud and you know that you're going to deploy to some system you know, sometime in the future, but you can actually start your development early. Also, once it's been deployed and your vehicle's out there, you can actually continuously update it. And that's what we see with the being able to use some of the stuff that's come from the cloud and actually use it for the vehicle. So we took it a step further and we basically formed this initiative called SOFI. It stands for Scalable Open Architecture for the Embedded Edge. And it's really about using techniques that have come from some other um, environments like the cloud, but applying them to embedded and automotive and software-defined vehicles, the first one. So we have actually have a demo of, uh, of a Sophie here, and this is really sort of showing how you can take these software-defined workloads, develop them in the cloud, and then deploy them. And we're using techniques such as orchestrators and containers that are used in the cloud, but we're actually bringing them down into the vehicle. You know, one of the key differences that everyone's going to say is, yeah, but the, the cloud, that's not functionally safe, that's not real-time. Those are the, the big things in automotive. It's, it's got to be safe, it's got to be real-time. Real yeah. So um, what changes or ad adaptations to this methodology are you needing to make? Well, and so that's what Sophie's all about. But you, you've actually hit it completely on the uh, nail on the head there. So you're right. The cloud doesn't really know anything about real-time. It doesn't know anything about safety whereas the vehicle is all about having functional, functionally safe software and stuff like that. So what we're doing as Sophie is we're looking at the existing standards that are used in cloud, but actually adapting them so that they can be used for functionally safe or real-time systems. And we and understanding that the architecture of a vehicle, it's a lot of heterogeneous computes. You know, people are saying the car's gonna be a data center on wheels. Sure, but it's going to also need to have these, these um, functionally safe and, and real-time components. And that's what Sophie, the, the, the sort of industry organization that Sophie is, is really looking at that and as to how can we bring this functionality into, 
into these existing standards. And so when we, when we formed SOFI, we actually wanted to have different um, companies and organizations across the whole automotive and software space. And so if you go to sofi.io, which is our website, you'll see who the founding members are, so OEMs and tier ones, software companies, really trying to everyone to come, come together. And now what we're doing is we're basically going into the implementation phase. And this is a good example where we actually have a demonstration of you know, a SOFI-based system um, for automotive. It's actually running an autonom part of an autonomous stack. Now, when we look at um, the future of the software-defined vehicle, one of the architectures that's being proposed is the, the zonal architecture. Right. That primarily sees a, like a massive, powerful, high-performance computer at the center, and then sort of ECUs distributed around that, yeah. all of varying sizes, but maybe functionality spread across ECUs yeah. or multiple functionalities yeah. in an ECU. Does Sophie have a, a limit? Is, is this really targeting the, the highest end of this or could it also extend right into those smaller boxes? So it, it depends whether those boxes are really software defined or not. So you're absolutely right that we're, we're, we're moving through a phase right now where we have these different domain controllers which are, are still kind of quite big compute but they're on a specific domain like ADAS or IVI or whatever. When we get to this sort of central compute plus zonal architecture, that's where it gets interesting because that central compute is going to be running different software functions, different domains almost, and then connecting via high-speed networking to the different ECUs or the zones that will, will be working with those ECUs. But the idea is anything that's software defined in the vehicle, you should be able to take advantage of the SOFI architecture to actually develop and deploy. Well, Robert, thank you ever so much for taking us through Sophie. It's very interesting and I think it's a very exciting initiative and really looking forward to seeing how it plays out in the coming years. Thank you.